Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing the top 10 cards from the Commander 2015 set. This set is just getting released today, so if I missed anything on the list, please leave it in the comments, or if there are cards that you disagree with, have a conversation there, post your own list. I'm always looking for other people's opinions or thoughts on these things. Uh, let's jump right in. There are some great reprints, but this is not going to be focusing on the reprints from a financial perspective. You definitely need to be aware that these cards are dropping pretty quickly. I will cover them in an upcoming finance video. Uh, that doesn't mean you should avoid them entirely, though. Cards like Phyrexian Arena and Rite of Replication will be powerhouses for years to come, and I'm happy to start trading for them here in the next 30 days after they're a little bit lower in price. Uh, let's jump into the top 10 here. At number 10, I've got Magus of the Wheel, and I want to really, really like this guy, but a 3 casting cost 3-3 three, three is why he is here at number 10. If he was a 3-4, or if he had haste, I would be really, really happy with him. Also, if that tap symbol wasn't there and it was just coal and sacrifice him so that you could just pay all the mana, 5 mana in one turn when you need to, he would be amazing. He's going to see some play. I really like when they do cards that play off of other cards. Magus of the Wheel is clearly based off of Wheel of Fortune, and Wheel of Fate is one of my favorite uh, suspend cards out there. Power level-wise, this seems a lot weaker than Days Undoing, which was recently printed in Origins, uh, but it is fun. I really like the artwork. It's going to see some play in red EDH decks that really need that card draw. The number nine spot here, I've got Blade of Sheaves. A lot of other people have mentioned that this is going to be an amazing card in EDH. I'm not convinced about it yet. I would like to have had some stats on an equipment that costs two and equips for four. It could have been a sword, but what I do like about it is there are, are some combos, not with Geist, but with things like Dragon, Mage, and Notion Thief. The idea that you can get everybody to discard their hands and then draw the hands for you seems really cool. There's got to be other ways to make this happen. One of the things about uh, Myriad, though, is that whenever it attacks each opponent, other than the defending player, you may put a token copy onto the battlefield that's tapped and attacking. It's not going to trigger those when attacking moments, but it will end up triggering damage to an opponent, those type of things. So there's got to be some cool combinations out there. Uh, the other card that I kind of have here as an honorable mention is Thought Vessel. For a two casting cost artifact, I really like this one. No maximum hand size is super popular with casual players, and it's very cool. Yeah. Number eight spot here, I've got a Jurin, the Shifting Flame. Six caster, very casual card, but whenever you cast a spell, put the cards in your hand on bottom of your library in any order, then draw that many cards. If you can combine this with something like land tax that is giving you a bunch of extra lands into your hand, turn those into real cards, this is going to be a powerhouse. I look forward to playing this in an Is It deck or even a Jeskai deck. The next one I've got here is Fiery Confluence at 7. I like the Confluence cards generally. Choose 3 and you can do them more than once can be very, very powerful. Even if each of these effects are rather weak on their own, having those effects together makes this card extremely utilitarian. It's great for control decks. I like the deal one damage to each creature mode and the destroy target artifact mode. Everybody's got a soul ring, take out their soul ring and help control the board. This is the type of fun EDH card I'm happy to see. Will it see a lot more play than something like Electricery? Definitely. Will it see more play than something like Shattering Pulse? Probably not, because Shattering Pulse can be massive advantage over many turns. But it falls in between those, and it will see play overall in red decks. The number six spot here, I've got Giant Plasm. Very cool artwork there. Looks like it's from Monsters, Inc. This is a playback to the early clone 
and it's an improved version of clone. I like when they take an old card and try to make it relevant in today's environment. Anytime your copy of your opponent's creatures can get bigger than their copy, you've got a huge advantage going on. I like this. Another fun, well-designed card. Number five spot here, I've got Ether Snatch. This is crazy. Gain control of target spell. You may choose new targets for it. This is similar to a misdirection or a commandeer, except it works on any type of spell and it can have multiple targets. If you've got the mana, Ether Snatch is a powerhouse. I am trading for these just for fun in EDH. They're very reasonably priced to start out. Are they going to see play in Eternal formats? No, but they're going to see lots of play in EDH. The number four spot here, I've got Mizziak's Mastery. And this is a really tough card to evaluate. Is this better than Past in Flames? Will this make it into a Storm deck? Currently I'm saying no. The overload cost is just too high, and four mana to be able to cast one card from your graveyard is a little rough, but it really depends on what that card is. This is a card that I'm going to watch for Legacy and for Vintage playability, and when it comes to EDH, this is a broken, powerful, I win card. It's red, so the value on it's not going to be extremely high, but it's going to be a lot of fun to play. And what is that that he's on there? A mechanical bug? This should have been a blue-red card. Super cool is the looking art there. Number three spot here, I've got Mirren of the Clan now. Very interesting card. I've heard some people talk about playing it already in... Legacy in Mikfit, which is a crazy ramp deck. It's kind of a tier two deck, although it's got a lot of power to crush some of the tier one decks because it casts things like Thrag Tusk multiple times on turn three, turn four. It's a very interesting deck. I'll do a deck tech on one later. I like the design of this card. A three, four for four is a little bit rough on the mana cost, but in EDH, you're just going to build up those experience counters and possibly take over the board if your opponents don't have a way to deal with the reoccurring things coming out of your graveyard. Very cool card, very happy with this. The number two spot here, we've got probably the most hyped card, which is Mystic Confluence. Five casting cost, it has Mana Leak, Unsummon, and Dry Card all on the same card. You can do all three of those different modes, or you can just choose to do one of them three times. I like Confluence. The question is, where will this C play? I would put this in almost any blue EDH deck. The utility of Unsummon is really, really powerful. Add on, draw a card, and counter a spell, and you've got a blowout coming. Now, will this see any legacy play? Five casting cost is really rough. I'm never going to replace a Force of Will for it, and probably not a Misdirection. Although, if Misdirection isn't right for the deck and I'm looking for a fifth counter spell, definitely been in several top deck wars with my grindy decks where a Force of Will means we're one for oneing, and Mystic Confluence would mean draw two cards plus counter a spell, stop an attack, draw a card, and counter a spell. I can see this possibly as a one-of in some legacy brews, although, don't quote me on that, it, the five casting cost is so rough for legacy. Almost, almost all other cards at that level have an alternative casting cost. Once again, this is a card that was clearly designed for EDH, that I'm going to try to play it outside of EDH, but it's going to be a powerhouse in EDH for years to come. In many situations, this is better than Cryptic Command in EDH. I'm going to take a break here before I get to number one, and I'm actually a little bit disappointed. I think that uh, MTG Goldfist's um, Saffron Olive nailed it. This is the first set from Commander that we've seen that doesn't have clearly eternally playable cards that people are clamoring for. Scavenging Ooze, Toxic Deluge, True Name Nemesis, Containment Priest, those are powerhouses in Legacy 
and shake up the coolest competitive format out there. I was really pretty disappointed when looking through this list. I went through all the spoilers about four or five times in creation of this video to see if I had missed something that looks like it's hidden aimed at the legacy market, and I feel like they decided not to target this to see how well it would sell if it didn't have a true name nemesis or a containment priest or a toxic deluge, which is a little bit sad. I really like what those two and three casters are doing to Legacy. They're shaking it up, they're making different strategies really viable, and I hope that maybe I just missed a card in the spoilers. And my number one is a card that I hope finds a strategy in Legacy and I know will be a powerhouse in EDH, and that is Karlov of the Ghost Council. I'm a huge fan of Soul Sisters. I did a deck tech for Soul Sisters a while back for the channel. This guy is giant quickly in a Soul Sisters deck. First turn, your life gainer. Second turn, he's going to be a 4-4. Four, four. Third turn, lingering souls or spectral possession. He gets giant really quickly. Once you hit six counters on him, you're able to exile creatures. Board control right there. This is the one breakout card that I hope sees some legacy play. Unfortunately, it's in black-white, which isn't a very popular combo right now, and it's a spirit advisor, so getting it out with Cavern of Souls is going to be a little bit rough. If it was a human, you could fit it into a little more decks. Geist might be someone to look at with this. I'm definitely brewing with this guy both in EDH and in Legacy. This is the one card that I think could break out into a Legacy format overall. To draw some extra cards and explore the multiverse, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. If you've got any suggestions of cards that I missed, please leave them in the comments. Uh, we are almost at 10,000 subscribers, so I've got an Ask Anything uh, coming up in mid-December. Think about the questions that you want answered there. I'm going to have a specific video for that. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Take care.